Welcome to Y-Lab, the makerspace located in the basement workshops of the historic David Dunlap Observatory in Richmond Hill, Ontario, Canada, where the main mirror of the giant telescope has its own private elevator so it can be lowered down into the vacuum chamber for maintenance. And yes, there is a vacuum chamber. <laughs> this is lesson 15 of our Canadian Amateur Radio Training course. We're covering inductors, capacitors, and transformers. This is one of the four more difficult sections of the course, so we'll go for 80 to 90 percent on this quiz and count on the other sections to keep your average up so you can get your basic or basic with honors. <clears throat> Resistors. We covered some of this in lesson two, so a quick refresher. In series, you add up the values. So if you have two 100 ohm resistors, the total resistance of them linked together in series from head to tail, like you see on the left, is 200 ohms. In parallel, it's a more complicated formula, uh, one over the inverse of each one, uh, but we can cheat on that. For the test, they always use the same value for those resistors. So just divide the number, the resistance value by the number of resistors. So in this case, we have two 100 ohm resistors, so we divide 100 by 2, and our total resistance is 50. If it's three resistors, like in the diagram, and they're all 100 ohms, then our resistance will be 100 divided by 3, or 33.3 ohms. It's a cheat, but it works. Now, inductors, they're also called coils. They're also called chokes. And you'll see all three names in the test, just to confuse you. It's a coil of wire. Uh, it has a symbol L, and its value is in Henry's. So the value of the inductance in Henry's is based on the number of coils, or the number of times it wraps around, the diameter of the coil, the length, and the core material, what they put inside the coils. Now the coil generates a magnetic field to restrict current. So the symbol looks like a squiggly resistor, more rounded. And so because it looks like a resistor, our formulas will be exactly the same. So the inductance in series of two coils is just the sum of the two. So two 100 Henry coils would equal 200 Henrys. And 200 Henrys would be a really big coil. A lot of it's measured in milli or micro Henrys. In parallel, the same thing. We add up the inverses, and same as the resistors, we can cheat if it's two 100 Henry coils, and they're in parallel, we can divide 100 by 2, and we get 50 Henrys when they're in parallel. Capacitor is two or more metal plates with a charge between them. They're also separated by a material that isolates the two plates. And that symbol is C, and it's measured in farads. Now, the value of the capacitor in farads is based on a bunch of factors, including the surface area of the plates, which means how big they are, the distance between the plates, the material between them, the dielectric, and the number of plates. Now, think of capacitors as the opposite of an inductor or a resistor, in fact, for the formulas. And that's going to keep coming back in the next few slides. Capacitor is like the inverse of an inductor. So if they're in parallel as opposed to series, we add up the values. So two capacitors in parallel of 100 farads will be 200 farads. In series, we can apply the same cheat for the test. If they're all the same value, we divide by the number of capacitors in parallel. So three 100 farad capacitors in parallel will be 100 divided by 3, or 33.3 farads. And again, that would be huge. We're measuring the value of these things in milli or microfarads. Now, the magic of capacitors and inductors in radio is where things get funky and make radio possible. And it's all based on the fact we're not just using DC, we're using AC. 
And because of that, we get an effect called reactance. It's kind of like resistance, but it's dependent on the frequency. And again, remember to think of a capacitor as the opposite of an inductor. So our formula for reactance for an inductor. Now there's a mouthful on the screen. So the capital X with the L says that's reactance with the L meaning inductor. Let's go through the formula a little bit. It starts with 2 pi, and that's because we're dealing with AC. We're dealing with alternating current. And whenever we deal with a wave like that, that looks like a sine wave, that's actually a representation of the circle. And you always have 2 pi in there somewhere. Anytime there's a circle, anytime there's waves, you can count on 2 pi being in there. Just like 2 pi r is the uh, circumference of a circle. The f is because the reactance, we said, is dependent on the frequency. It varies with frequency. And L, well, it's the inductor value in Henry's because it's a formula for inductance. We have to have it there. So 2 pi because it's a wave, it's dependent on the frequency, and it's dependent on the inductor. I hope that simplifies it a bit. Now, the reactance for a capacitor is the reverse. Okay, so again, we're the opposite. So you just flip it. We have 2 pi because it's a wave and a circle. We have F for frequency, and we have C, which is the value of the capacitor in farads. Now, why do we care about this? Well, it's filters. So let's take a look at how the two are opposites. The capacitor is a 1 over F formula, you know, F on the bottom. So the higher the frequency, the lower the impedance is going to be or lower the capacitive reactance. The inductor has the frequency at the top. So the higher the frequency, the higher the impedance, or the higher the reactance is going to be. Now, when we combine the two, here's what happens. So in series, the capacitor is going to have a higher reactance at lower frequencies. So it's going to block those lower frequencies. The inductor has a higher reactance at the high frequencies. So when they meet in the middle, we have what's called resonance. And that means that's a frequency where it's going to let the signal through. And that's how we tune a radio. So by varying one or the other, that vertical line you see there is going to move to the left or the right and allow a specific frequency to go through. And if you look at a tuner knob on an old radio, it's actually a big variable capacitance with multiple plates that overlap more or less depending on how you turn the knob. And then in parallel, it's the reverse. One will allow lows through, the other one will allow highs through. And we get the highest reactance at resonance, so that will filter out a frequency for us. And just flip that chop up that chart upside down. Okay. An LCR circuit is where we add a resistance to the LC circuits. Now the R doesn't change the reactance, but at resonance, the LC in series is at max voltage. And so the max voltage through the resistor means the max current getting through, which is the highest signal level. So in the general, to complete a circuit so we don't have to have a short circuit, we always have a resistance in there somewhere. Now, for the test, remember, audio and radio. We've talked about this. Big difference between the two is the frequency with audio at lower frequencies and radio at higher frequencies. So the audio frequencies, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz or 20 kilohertz. Radio frequency is high into the hundreds of megahertz and gigahertz. So a low frequency filter will clear out the audio frequencies. A high frequency filter will eliminate radio frequencies. 
Our next component's a transformer. We talked about that inside power supplies, especially to convert uh, 120 volts AC into the 12 volts DC in our radios. You may remember the transformer part just does the first part. It changes 120 volts down to 12 volts, but it's still AC at that point. Now a transformer is two coils, almost like two big inductors, wrapped together around the core. Each coil has a different number of windings. So that's the number of times it wraps around. And the primary and secondary coils are called windings on a transformer. And so if you put 120 volts through one, on the other side, you can get 12 volts if you have a 10 to one ratio of the number of coils. Now here's an interesting formula for you. The power is the same on both sides. The voltage is proportional to the number of coils. If side A has twice the coils, side B, it has twice the voltage. So remember what I said, we have 120 coils and we got 120 volts going in on the other side, we reduce that down to 12 coils and we'll have 12 volts. But our current goes by the inverse ratio. The power has to be the same. So remember from the earlier lessons, power is voltage time current. So the power has to be the same on both sides. So if the voltage is doubled, or in our case, the example we gave, if the voltage is reduced by a factor of 10, going from 120 to 12, then the current is going to go up by a factor of 12. Okay. Now, it's not a perfect power transfer, so you do get some loss to heat. This is the real world, after all. Now, that rule about the coils and the ratio of voltage across the two coils and the ratio of current happens if we have a closed circuit. So we're actually doing something on both sides. But if there's no load, if there's a, an open circuit on the secondary side, in this case our side with 12 volts, then there will be no current. But what you get as an effect is a magnetizing current on the primary. So the primary is going to look like a big magnet. And the higher the current on the primary side, the higher the magnetic field. If you move a metal piece of metal through the field, it'll induce some voltage in that metal. And the maximum is when the movement is perpendicular to the lines of force. Just something to remember. Now, some other uh, basics about magnets. Steel and iron make good permanent magnets. Other metals tend not to magnetize or are unaffected. And the poles on a magnet are labeled north-south or plus-minus. And opposites attract, like poles repel each other. Any kid who's played with a magnet knows this. Or sorry, with a couple of magnets knows this. Now, impedance. It's measured in ohms. Well, we used to think that was stupid. We've gotten a little smarter since we wrote these slides. Okay? The impedance is a combination of resistance and the reactance from the capacitors and inductors. Uh, some people say it's two-dimensional. It, it's, it's complex. It looks like ohms. But like ground, it has many meanings. So it's based on frequency. So your impedance changes based on the frequency. There's an optimal frequency for passing a signal. That's the resonance that we showed you that peaked out. And there's an optimal frequency for absorption of a signal and that will actually match a pure resistance. Okay? If there's only resistors, then the resistance is equal to the impedance. So think about it. The, the best way to think about this is think of Ohm's law. So we have V equals IR, or R equals V over I. Now, if we're restricting current because we've got a capacitor and inductor in there. And as we saw in the earlier diagram, it will restrict the signal going through based on the frequency. 
well, we're reducing V or we're reducing I. And so it acts just like a resistance on Ohm's law, even though it's a different physical thing happening. Now, measuring things. We're going to talk about voltmeter. That's going to come up on the test. Uh, if you're measuring voltage, it has to be in parallel. So all that means is you can connect it across the two terminals, say, of the battery, even though it's in the circuit. You don't have to disconnect the circuit. So it's in parallel. You're doing it at the same time as the circuit is running. And we call it a voltage jump on a battery or a drop across a component. And so we just measure. Don't unhook anything. Just touch it across the terminals of the battery or the resistor or whatever else. Uh, and that's called in parallel. It's just wrapping around and you measure it that way. To measure current, we have to be in the middle of it. So you have to open up the circuit and put your ammeter in the middle of it. It's like water flow. If you want to measure it, you have to put a wheel in the middle of it to catch it all. Now, a multimeter is uh, one device that combines the ability to measure voltage, current, and resistance. But the same connection rules apply depending on what you're measuring. If you're measuring voltage, you got to go parallel across. If you're measuring current, you have to go in the circuit and measure. Now take quiz 15. Uh, remember, this is one of the four more difficult ones because of the questions about the capacitors and inductors. It is doable. Repeat the quiz until you score 80 to 90 percent. You'll probably forget more on these four difficult quizzes. That's why we really put the effort to get into higher marks on the other sections. So proceed now to quiz 15. And again, we're YLab at https colon slash slash ylab.ca. Uh, please leave a comment below and maybe we'll get around to reviewing them and posting them.